Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check before we begin? Morning, everyone. Friday. <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. Let's get started. We have our runaway market. The Dow is up almost 200 points, half a percent. The S&P is up almost half percent, 0 0.46%, 20 points up. And we have NASDAQ that is up. 51.034%. And we have Russell that is up um, 13 points, almost half percent. All right. So um, economic releases at 945. So in about 15 minutes, uh, we have flash manufacturing PMI and flash services PMI. Uh, the This release, the uh, in fact, these two releases, are moderate impact for the market, but before they're coinciding with our first calibration, it's gonna be interesting to watch. So we're gonna be waiting for the data to come uh, to come in. All right, so um, this is pretty much on the economic front. I think it's gonna be a pretty light day today. Uh, what I'm looking at right now is um, basically, Russell. Russell is the only one that has not participated in a bigger way in the overnight trading session, and it, it is under some pressure. Um, I want to take you guys to some other charts right now. So um, to some other type of analysis, I want you to understand the bigger picture of what's happening right now in the market and some extensions that we're looking at, some price targets, etc. So I'm going to navigate to my analysis screen. Okay, so here we have uh, here we have the Dow. So I'm going to move very quickly to the daily chart right here. So you can see that we're trading into a lot of resistance. We do have an all time high to the 35,000 and we do have a lot of resistance in the overhead. So with that being said, it is under a lot of pressure here because all of these levels of resistance are so stacked together. Uh, we had a nice tradable void from the overnight trading session. These were our levels from yesterday's trading session. I left them in here because we don't have any other entries at the moment for the Dow. Uh, we definitely need to see a pullback area. So what happened in the overnight trading session is that we the price stabilized and it started to break out at 2 o'clock at the European Open, continued through the London session open. And as you can see, it has achieved the first target. And take a look how it revisited our target into the 915 area. So really pretty darn accurate. So as you can see, the uh, price is trending. We have a nice fanning out of the moving averages. Finally, yesterday, the price was under pressure because the price was trading under the moving averages, was trading under support. And right uh, in yesterday's trading session, we had a nice inside bar, inside bar again, and the price started to navigate higher in the afternoon trading hours, did a massive sandwich towards the close of the session, and then stabilized the whole entire night. We do have, like I said, targets. We have about three targets uh, into, um, um, in, uh, we have about three targets all the way into the 35,000. 35,000 is the all-time high. So as we're getting into the all-time high, probably price is gonna react a little bit more, um, um, I would say a little bit more jittery into these parts, but we're going to see how uh, that is gonna play out. In terms of uh, room to run for higher, we are actually, let's navigate to our extension levels here. And we're gonna go to our weekly. Let's go back here into extensions. Okay, so here we are. This is where we're, uh, this is what we're looking at. We're halfway into our extension target into the 161.8 and that is the 36.623. So as you could see here, this massive formation because let's face it, this is a really wide tradable void. So we have uh, had a run of price and consolidating into the 35,000. 35,000 also whole number, median area, and uh, anything that breaks over 35,000 is going to launch higher for 36, uh, for 36, six, uh, uh, 23. But remember, it's not going to go all at once and it's not going to go parabolic up because the price never goes that way. So the price goes up and then it pulls back or it ranges or 
uh, whatever. So we're going to be looking for definitely for a continuation higher. So it is supporting the continuation higher. Also, you can see here this weekly chart is supporting the trend. Uh, we're navigating very nicely off of the 20 SMA. So <clears throat> this becomes the rotational point. Now, remember this week we came in uh, on Monday uh, and we have revisited the 20 SMA. You can see that we dug a little deeper into it, but then we rotate it really nicely. So what this is going to do for us for this upcoming week, this is extremely bullish. If we maintain these highs uh, for this week, uh, we still have about six, seven hours left until the market closes. And if we maintain this candle, I believe that next week um, with possibly with you know, obviously we have to tune into the fundamentals from earnings, but this is looking very bullishly. Uh, it's going to probably perform a really nice um, buy off of this weekly chart, off of this 10 EMA, off of this 10 EMA and the 20 SMA. So if we are going to take out this Friday's high going into Monday, we will be moving higher. And this is the trajectory that we're moving on. So it's really nice to have a little bit of perspective of where the price uh, may, be, uh, may be going into. All right, so uh, as far as today's trading session, like I said, we need to wait for a little bit more calibration. I'm looking at the one minute high low, I'm looking at the two minute high low, the five minute high low is very bullish right now. It still has about three minutes until it, uh, till it wraps up. So I wanna take you very closely to this, um, uh, to this two minute. So the two minute typically in an environment like that, like this, I like to play this two minute high low because it's into an ascending pattern because all the other time frames are supporting the uptrend. Uh, however, I'm seeing a divergence and you're gonna see it just in a moment when we're gonna go through NASDAQ stocks, uh, so through NASDAQ, uh, through, the, through NASDAQ, the futures index and also through Russell that they're divergent. And even the SMB is just putting a lid on price, has a temporary lid on price, still coiling around that uh, fulcrum number of uh, 4380. So just coiling, coiling, coiling. And don't forget that the SMP also has an all time high that is uh, really close by. All right, so uh, this is what I'm watching um, in more, um, I would say that I, I would go more for a breakout above this 913 to 915 level. So don't forget that these are the levels from yesterday. This resistance is going to serve as uh, this resistance is going to serve as support. But I wanted to show you how accurate our levels are. They're incredibly accurate. So take a look at the moving averages and take a look how it pulled back to the 20 SMA. I keep on talking about this. We rotated higher and we have achieved this pivot here. We went back up, we went higher, we went back into the pivot, consolidated here in the overnight training session, back up. And then when we navigated higher, we went right into this resistance area. So really accurately uh, calculated. All right, so as you can see that two minute high low that I've been talking about just triggered. I don't wanna have anything to do with it right now. I think it's way too early because we are, uh, wow, we're really divergent. NASDAQ really coming in and this is popping higher. So this is the two minute high low that I, uh, uh, that I talked about a little bit earlier, the two minute high. And then this is the two minute low, which is, uh, which is in overnight support because it has been basing here since five, 45. So it has been uh, having a lot of support into this area, finally exploded. Look how it went into our resistance and to pivot here into this dotted line. Isn't it incredible to see how these levels are reacting and you trade with so much confidence having these levels on. All right, so let's move to the m and SMP and I'm going to move uh, right here first off to the daily chart because I want to take you a little bit deeper into the analysis on it. We have an all-time high of 4384.5. And of course, we do have a really nice possible rotation. So if we take out, if the M&E S&P is going to take out the 4384.5, we will see brand new highs. So where do we, where are we going into the m and S&P, right? So where are we going? So uh, let's go to the monthly chart here. Monthly or weekly are just fine. And you can see that we're in, we're surpassing a huge, uh, a huge milestone into the 161.8 in which YM is still, so YM, uh, the Dow futures is still trying to catch up with price. Uh, so that's the reason why it's rallying right now. 
but it's actually the most extended because if you uh, if you go back and look at YM, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. So for eight continuous hours, uh, the price has been uh, running higher. So where's the mini S&P going? Well, I have to tell you, it's going into the 5,000 uh, area because look at the huge tradable void. Now, remember when we have these wide tradable voids, we can expect for the price to consolidate for a, a bit longer period of time, or we can expect the pop-up of about three to four candles and then a pullback to revisit the level. But in this particular case, we have been crossing through this level for almost four months, not quite this month, but almost for four, for three months, three months and a half, we have been coiling into the 42, uh, into the 4,200. 4,200 has been the common denominator, just back and forth, back and forth. And finally now, last week and this week, we're finally launching higher. All right, so let's take a quick look at smaller time frames, and I'm going to go back to our default with our levels, and uh, we're going to go to our one hour chart. Uh, yeah, let's let's go to the one hour. Okay, so the one hour chart, as you can see here, this is an all time high. This is a pullback, and we're really nicely uh, trade trending. The overnight trading session was trending really nicely off of this 10 exponential moving average. And it's really holding very nicely. So what is the game plan for today? So let's take a quick look on the five minute, right? So on the five minute, you can see that the price has been coiling into this level of 4381 to 4383 for the high. We have a peekable high right here. And we have all these, I would call this, let's say a triple top, one, two, three, quadruple top, one, two, three, four, because we're just rotating right now. I would watch this level of minor support of 4374 to see if it's holding. And then we will see if we get any kind of rotation off of this uh, off of this area. We have a huge gap. So if you don't have any extended data on your charts and if you're just watching your trading sh session charts, we have a huge gap. The gap fill is going to be somewhere into the 4365 to 4362. Um, and I think that would be a lot, a really steep pullback. So we really need to uh, hold the 74 right now. 74 is a really nice median area. We also have a 10 exponential moving average at 75 from the New York trading session charts alone. So we have a little support for the New York trading session if that's going to start to kick in. So I really like the structure ES. ES may be the one that we're going to go for if we have a trading opportunity somewhere above this resistance high. So we want to see it above this resistance high. We don't want to see uh, anything that trades weaker into this area. I, I am liking the 30 minute chart. The breakout is going to be over 82. We're going to be looking for a continuation 80, into the 84. And then we have a really nice tradable void all the way into the 90. So this is how I see uh, things uh, uh, play out in today's trading session. <clears throat> We're also going to be looking to see if on minor time frames we are going to get a pullback into, uh, first of all, into the 70, uh, 74 area. So if the 74 area is going to hold and if we see any kind of, let's say, two minute rotation or so, this may be worth a try. It's going to be way too aggressive for the five minute. The five minutes still needs to break over um, 4380. <clears throat> so we're going to have to wait a little bit. Like I said, there's huge, there's a, uh, there's a really huge, and don't forget it's Friday. <clears throat> and there's this huge uh, divergence in the market right now. So uh, we're going to have to wait a, a, wait a little bit and see how it will play out. All right, NASDAQ. Um, NASDAQ, let's uh, start first with the, the daily. Okay, so the daily has poked above yesterday's high pointing up a little bit. Uh, the weekly chart is actually uh, also uh, very strong, which points us to a very strong week next week um, and for a continuation higher. But I would like to show you guys what I'm looking at for in terms of continuation higher. We're right into resistance. You can see these extensions. We're already at 261.8. Really, because we had a lot of relative strength in NASDAQ. Don't forget that post pandemic, so post pandemic low here, NASDAQ has been the one um, index and the leader of the pack, right? It had the most COVID safe 
uh, stocks under it. So the tech stocks, right? Uh, and that's the reason why it's so advanced. You're not going to see the other indices trade into the 261.8. They're somewhere here or on their way into the 261, maybe halfway or a quarter way. Uh, this is a really strong, really strong, strong formation. And in the overnight trading session, we just had an all time high once again in NASDAQ. So NASDAQ stocks looking really well. And by the way, Snap, wow, the performance is, uh, post earnings last night, incredible, was up like $12 this morning uh, from yesterday's close. So really, really strong. So for NASDAQ, uh, I would like to keep an eye as well on the one hour chart. One hour, I think it's gonna be really important. We have a little support here. I don't like the fact that we're trading right now below the 20 SMA on the one hour chart. This is creating a little bit of bearishness, bearish momentum. Uh, I'm seeing the price stabilize and trying to stabilize on the two minute chart. And remember yesterday we picked it up, actually it was on the two minute chart that we picked it up and then we uh, followed the five minute rules. And by the way, it's setting up right now on the five minute as we're speaking. Okay, so take a look. We have the doji, so we could do, uh, we could do 958. Uh, it could be bullish above 958. Yeah, 958, uh, and we can have a stop 933, 933. I don't want to be a, uh, overly aggressive because I'm not seeing a lot of cooperation from the rest of the indices. So we got to be very careful here. The one minute and the two minute may be get, getting ready to go. It's only 942. I remember we have news at 945 and I don't do gambling, okay? All right, so let's, uh, until the news comes out, uh, RTY. Uh, RTY is already doing a five minute rotation um, and the one hour chart in RTY is still range bound. We do have a bullish above level 2214 is the only index that has a bullish above level. Like, by the way, only futures index that has a bullish above level right here. Um, what I want to show you here is that the four hour uh, is also a uh, incredibly bullish over 14. So we have multi-time frame alignment into it. So that looks very good for bullish. Maybe it's going to set up for later because you saw yesterday that some of the trades set up after 12 o'clock. So nothing happened literally from we exited the trade into, uh, into 12 o'clock or so. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, what else do we have? We have oil that I want to point out. <clears throat> Don't forget about the Baker Hughes uh, oil, oil rate count today. That is at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Uh, we have a range. We have a range. And it's going to be bullish above 72.11. Uh, contingent on the support level uh, that is going to serve as a stop below 71.45. Uh, the targets for this is uh, probably going to be like an R1 into the 50s, uh, close to 1R, close, very close to 1R into the 50s. And then we have room to 73 and 73.20. So this, this would be the game plan for oil. Um, no, okay, yeah. So this is, the, this is the only pattern that I would be looking for. Gold, not worth mentioning. Uh, we have to see the weekly close in order or and the daily close weekly close and the daily close in order to take uh to take some decisions all right so uh let's move now to our watch list and let's see if we have any kind of patterns we talked about a pattern here on the five minute we still have one minute left i think it's going to be uh really aggressive to get it long here inside bar man this is so appealing right now to get it long um we're already having some uh, quick triggers into uh, the M&E S&P. Um, YM, which was the strongest, is just not ready and it's coming back a little bit. So you can see that the market is very jittery. Okay, news is out right now. Okay, so let's see how the market is going to digest, uh, digest this news. You can see that we have a, ra a lot of range bound action. Here it is, and it's the trigger. Let's see how it's going to digest. This is the first reaction off the numbers. Yeah, I know, Paul. And yeah, again, and I was like, I'm not get, I'm not pulling the trigger right ahead of the news. I'm really not into, um, you know, high, high risk uh, because you don't really know what's going to happen. It may have like a big impulse and that big impulse may come from the fact that there were a lot of traders that were short and they're triggering their shorts 
their shorts are triggering and that's why you're getting the flurry to the upside. So it could be a fake move, but so far the pattern, by the way, the pattern is absolutely beautiful. And the pattern in NASDAQ was beautiful. Like I showed you earlier when it was developing. All right, so you can see that the S&P is not having a bit, uh, much traction. Uh, Russell is not having traction as all, at, uh, at all. And right now it's just pulling back. Uh, YM is pulling back as well. Okay, NASDAQ is into the moment of truth right here because it is trading into the 10 EMA. This would be like the first target and this is gonna be the decision point. If it's going to be strong, it will continue higher like it is. And if it's weak, it's gonna get rejected. 20 SMA can be seen as a target too. I didn't get in it. Oh, Randy, you're in. Oh my gosh, so my Chris, you're in. Okay, so I would trail is super tight right now. So um, what I would do, I would put my stop at 960. Oh my God, you guys are all in. I'm the only one that is like really slowed this morning and chickened out. <laughs> okay, so trails is 60s. You have a target right here into the 978. 978 is the target. 978 is the target. You have a high of 974. Congrats, guys. Congrats. Perfect. Paul. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. For those of you that are in, 10 more seconds, and you're going to be lifting your stop to 66. Three seconds. Go. Trail stop 66. RTY. Yeah. RTY is just chop, chop. All right, and here is the m and &E &E and to the m and &E &E, I like this structure here on the one hour and also on the 30 minute. This, this is actually what's going to be in play right now. So the trigger point <clears throat> is going to be 80, uh, 81 and a half to 82. Uh, yep, 81. Yeah, it's gonna be 81 and a half or 82. And the stop is going to have to be, uh, it's going to have to be into this minor support level. And then we're looking for an all time high, obviously. That would be the first target. And then this little juicy tradable void above. All right. NASDAQ was gorgeous, by the way. NASDAQ gorgeous. All right. Okay. Uh, four minutes, and you're going to be lifting your stops to 71, 71, 71, trail 71. Uh, next target is 84. 84, if you're still in, good job, 953. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I, uh, yeah, 953 was a good entry. 953 was based on this, uh, 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 was based on this inside bar. Very nice, careful, it's into a massive resistance. New York trading session charts, 84 is a huge target. Keep your stops at 71 for now. 30 seconds into the next trail. If we hold the 70s, you're going to have to lift your stops up a little bit. I think it's going to be into the 75, 15 seconds, 15 seconds. It's the, yeah, it's the only trade that I like. Then the next one is going to be the m and &E s and but this one was um, really nice. Okay, trail stop goes now to 75, 75, 75, zero out. 975, zero out. 975 is you're out. Okay, and you're out. You should be out right now. Okay, that was it. That was the momentum. That was the momentum for uh, for NASDAQ. All right. Wow, Russell is giving it all back, weakening. Uh, the Dow is weakening massively. m and &E SMP is not lifting into the 4382. I have my active trader for the m and &E SMP. Nice formation in NASDAQ. NASDAQ has the doji on the hourly. Uh, we have 10 more minutes left and uh, we could be really bullish above the 14,994, I think. Let me see if this is the accurate number. Yes, 14,994. That's gonna be another bullish above area for it. 
Okay, momentum has slowed down. Let's keep an eye on oil as well. If oil is going to get a little lift into the uh, 72, 12, 72, 13, or 72, 15, that's going to be a pickup area for a long. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job on it. Wow. Awesome. Congratulations, everyone. Ramesh, Linda, Lori. Uh, okay, Paul. Who else was it? Randy? Awesome. Good job, Randy. Awesome. Chris. Dan. Guys, that's awesome. Oh, Don, you too? Wow. Awesome. 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 Good job. That, that's phenomenal. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, Paul, I wasn't even, I wasn't even going to mention it right now because I was just ready to send out uh, to send out a trail in Homer. <laughs> Homer crazy, crazy this morning. Crazy this morning. I mean, what, I don't know if that was. Um... Hey, Peter. Awesome. Well, I'm really happy you guys took the trade. I didn't take the trade. <laughs> okay. I was, listen, I went, I'm a little bit fearful of, you know, getting you guys in trades right before announcements. So I would pretty much want to see the announcements and then, you know, try to find a trade. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but Home Depot consolidating, I mean, uh, it has everything in its favor for higher. And this is definitely going to help uh, the Dow, hopefully. Fingers crossed, you know, that's a really good technical term. Um, <laughs> hey, Kevin. Um, um, Oh, Kevin, don't forget, and Peter, don't forget to click on all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what, you, what you're what you typing. Okay. Okay, don't forget for next week, Home Depot is going to be super strong. And if we hold the strength next week over to, over uh, actually, yeah, over today's high, Home Depot is going to be very strong. <laughs> all right. So yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep an eye on that. Home Depot strong, UNH is strong, Walmart is keeping strong. Nike brand new highs. Like I don't know. It's like what's up with Nike? And by the way, Costco, my favorite stock. So the, Co Costco is by far my favorite stock, <laughs> by far. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm seeing. Uh, I'm seeing some strength. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of strength in financials, even though AXP had earnings gapped up. Now it's pulling back a little bit. Morgan Stanley with a brand new high. I mean, come on, brand new high. Bank of America, uh, hanging on in there. But um, let's take a look at some NASDAQ stocks here that I have on my watch. Google with a brand new high 26, uh, 26, uh, 10. Remember last week when I was mentioning that um, Amazon is going to be a good buy into the 3,600. This is it, 3,600. It rotated into that area. In fact, let's put it up here because I want you guys to see the pattern that I was watching to see what I was referring to. Okay, so this is a daily chart. This is a daily chart. And you can see this prior high, which is pretty much into the 35.52. And we have the correlation here with the 20 SMA, which made it into the whole number 3,600. So this was the lid. If the price would have stayed below 3,600, it would have been bearish because we also have that sandwich, little sandwich there. The price was contained between the 20 and the 10, okay? We have another doji here. This is gonna be bullish above and bearish below, by the way. Um, and I'm still watching. I'm not thrilled about the bullish above because it doesn't have a lot of room to run higher. But if the price is going to take out 967, it's going to go lower. And we have the M&E &E, which is holding pretty well. So yeah, this is the line in the sand in Amazon. So Amazon over 3,600, this is bullish, probably going to go into the 3,700 and even higher into the high here, into the 73. Uh, Netflix, 
Yeah, I'm still, I'm looking at stocks because I don't have anything to watch in these indices. Uh, so Netflix, this is kind of like a bear sandwich, a lot of pressure from the 200 SMA. This was the earnings, uh, bad earnings came in, lost subscribers. Uh, the price really didn't close below the um, 50 SMA. So you could see that it held above borderline yesterday and today just breached it. So we're going to have to wait and see what today's all about. But under 506.80 or 505, this can potentially go down a little bit. I'm not a big fan for the downside because if you look to the left-hand side, this prior area, this consolidation is what propped it higher and created the gap fill right here. So this is the area, this is the breakout area. So now it's back into the breakout area. So even if it has that bearish feel to it, I don't think it's super uber bearish at this point. Okay, so time will tell. I'm not going to trade it. I'm just going to watch it. I'm just a watcher right now. All right, let's take a look at ZB because ZB is a little bit interesting here. So this is the daily in ZB. If we start trading again above the high here, over uh, over 165, we're going to go higher. So this is bullish above. Anything that is going to break below 163 is going to take the price back to 162.20. So this is a watch as well. By the way, natural gas popped higher and G. So let's do a little bit of analysis on natural gas. Do not have a trade in natural gas, by the way. Do not have a trade in natural gas. Uh, so natural gas trading into the highs. Just want to point out a little bit of a higher time frame here for the weekly. Okay. So you can see here that uh, we have had highs before. Let me put it here on the monthly because it's so much easier to see. And it's the price is a little bit more contested. The last time we had a pop up here was back in, I think it was 20, uh, 2019. Yeah, no, it was 2018. This was November, 2018. This is, this is November, 2018. This is December, 2018. Okay, this is January. So we haven't had uh, these levels. Um, the, uh, na so natural gas has not been trading into these levels since 2018, right? Wow. OK, uh, this is the prior resistance. And that's why it took some time into that uh, 380 or so. It was coiling a lot into that area. I like to have a little better price action from natural gas than what we had. But it's actually moving, uh, moving pretty well right now. Um, OK, let's see what else we have. Um, OK, so corn still stabilizing, not worth putting on the screen. Uh, and by the way, copper, copper, HG, okay, forgot the most important thing, right? Okay, so we have copper. Let's take a quick look on the hourly chart, okay? So we have copper with a high of $4.38, over $0.38, cents, and we have our first target into $4.40. So it came very, very close to our target one level. Now, remember, this is a swing trade, so you're not going to see me update it quite often, right? Our entry was yesterday. It's a little longer term trade. It's a longer term swing. Um, our entry is $4 and three, six, five. That is where we got in. And our stop is $4 and zero seven. We have a first target. We almost achieved the 440. See how we came here? Just very close. The high, oh, actually it came here. Why didn't I get the alert? Oh no. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was 3.399. Yeah. Because I have the alert because I wanted to sell half of it, but it didn't trigger. So I was like, what? Yeah. Okay. So let's recap and let's see what we have going on right now. Uh, let's take this back for oil because oil is a watch. Like I said, oil is a watch. I'm interested in this area for bullish, not necessarily interested for shorts. Here we have a let's say a beginning of a golden cross development here. We have the 50 and the 200 SMA um, that are trying to do this little cross here. Okay, so I'm watching here YM. YM is interesting. NASDAQ is a bit interesting here. Let's put this on the five. This is too choppy. This, I like it over these highs, no question. Uh, but YM here on the five minute, See the five minute, okay. 
Sorry, guys, too late, too late, too late, too late. Five minute rotation. If you're able to identify the five minute rotation, okay, here it is. Um, the entry is 50, 50 right here. This, uh, the stop is gonna have to be below um, 806 and the target, uh, the target is a bit asymmetric enter the 867. Uh, let's see how we play out here. NASDAQ is still uh, very strong. Yeah, let's just wait a little bit. Russell Doji as well, really small Doji. Right on support, right on support. Nice catch, Lori. This is rather bullish here. I would like it to see, to clear this 50 SMA. So YM is nice because it has the doji, but it doesn't have the room to run. So that makes it uh, problematic into that area. I'm still not giving up. Probably, uh, let's see what the time, oh, it's only 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock reversal time. We can potentially go higher here. We can rotate for higher possibly. I'm still watching the 850 area in um, YM. So still watching it, not in, I will call it. If we have a trade, I will call it loud and clear. The 15 minute seems to be really appealing if we hold, if we hold the current 10 a.m. low. So the 10 a.m. low is set at 810. If we violate this 810, we're gonna come in a little bit more, most likely to 800 or 780. NASDAQ going back up. Let me see the 15 minute on this one. See, it's a 15 minute trigger, but it's right into the 20 SMA, not clear. This is an inside bar. This is strong. This is nice. But this one is the problem right here because we have just started this 15 minute segment and this is not looking super strong here. Just watching, by the way, Microsoft with the brand new all time high. This is why uh, NASDAQ is so strong here. Still watching the Dow, still watching. So S&P, no question. I like S&P over 81 and a half. I'm not gonna trade it through the chop because it doesn't have any confirmation. Over the chop, yes. Uh, Russell is extending from that bullish above level. So it's creating a bit of weakness. The more the time progresses, the more I like, um, I like YM. YM another doji on the five. Uh, no, that would be resistance. This is a lid here. This is, this is a lid here. No. See, this is levitating into the high, get your clues from other indices and their behavior, because ultimately if the market is going to weaken, it's going to take down NASDAQ with it. NASDAQ is not going to remain uber strong if these indices are going to start turning around. Uh, and I'm not really that concerned for Russell because Russell, uh, you know, has a tendency to be like very moody. My top watch right now is uh, the Dow 
And like I said, SMP is going to, uh, SMP, I need to see it over these highs. If I don't have the confirmation over the highs, not very interested into it. Uh, we still have a lot of resistance into the mini SMP. And I don't know if it's going to digest this resistance or not. So I don't want to take any chances. I don't see anything of, uh, you know, like a nice tradable void. It's going to start moving a little bit higher once it gets over 80, but then 80, 82, that would be my trigger point for it. Let's see what the time is, it's 10.06. The two minute nice consolidation here. So see how it came right into this pivot here, right into this dotted line, this is resistance, but I do like it. Let's do, let's do YM, YM long, 54 to 55, 54, 55. Let's do 55, over 55 long. The stop is going to be below 810, below 810, under. Uh, it's going to put up a fight because um, it needs to get over. This is going to be tough. It has resistance at 60. So that, that resistance is just right into the trigger. Okay, and we're in. Uh, I would call 70 as a target one. 80 is massive. 80 is massive. And then we're going to go in 10 point increments all the way to 900. And then from 900, no, 900 to 910 again. Okay, these would be like, remember, first three targets are more achievable than the rest of the two targets, two to three targets. First two targets, yeah, 70 and 80. Uh, the price definitely needs to pop up above 80 and close above 80. If the price is not going to close above 80, it may get rejected and the trade can stop out. All right, so we have our trigger. Our entry is 55. We had a high, we have a high of 56. The five minute New York trading session charts is looking amazing compared to the overnight trading session. So um, let me just put it up here for you guys to see what encouraged me to get this pattern because we have this tradable void, okay? We have this tradable void right here. So this is what we're gonna be looking for. Okay, here we have the 60s, upper 60, 64 right now. As NASDAQ is coming in, we're punching, punching higher 64. Come on. That's that's the first line in the sand into the 60s. You see, you cannot see here in the New York trading charts, but when you go extended, you're going to see why. Boom, 10 EMA, right? You can see the 10 EMA. We need to get a lift into the 70s. When we get once we get into the 70s, we're going to try to punch through the 78. We need a lot of pressure. All eyes are going to be on the Dow stocks and their performance right now. Home Depot is rocking and rolling. Okay. Keep the hard stop. We need to digest, see how the price is contained between uh, the pivot and also the uh, 10 EMA, we need to close as much as possible above this. We have a new five minute sequence that has just started a few seconds ago, 19 seconds ago. We need to get the lift at least into the 75s. 70s are targeted one. We have a high 64, challenging the prior high, three points away from target one. I'm dumping, I'm dumping at 70. Bam, dumping half. All right, now the next target that we're looking for is going to be in the 80s. 
I'm looking to see if I can bring my stop to break even and I cannot bring it to break even yet. Good job, Randy. Love that. All right. Guess what we have next week, guys? Never a boring day. Never a boring week. We have a high of 73 in uh, YM. Our next target is 80. We're seven points away from Target. And let's put the stops at break even. Stop at break even right now on the second half. Stop at break even. We do not take any chances. We have a rotation pattern in NASDAQ. S&P is back into resistance. We don't want to take any chances. No gambling. 55 is the trail stop right now. If you're trading with only one contract, full size or micro, obviously you cannot collect profit as the price is going for you. And all I, all I can do right now is put the stop at break even. So you have a risk-free trade. So from this point on, the price is going to turn around. You're going to have a risk-free. You're going to get stopped out with zero losses. But if the price will continue higher from this point on, you're going to have a free trade. How sweet is that? A free trade. Okay, we need to see a high of 75. If we hit 75, we're going to 80 guaranteed. If we don't, and if we start breaking 56, we're going back lower. We had our first punch at 56. We're holding by a tick right now, literally by a tick. Russell is getting weaker. Take a look at Russell here. Yeah. Russell getting weaker. 55 is holding. Bruce, awesome. Bruce, awesome. You did fantastic. We have two more minutes until this five minute close is closing and the five minute candle is suggesting Wishy-washy action. <laughs> yes, that's a technical term, a wishy-washy pattern. Okay, it's a wishy-washy candle. If you see this candle right here, this is a wishy-washy, okay? So, okay, I think we're going to, all right, here we go, we're hit, okay? So 55 trailed out, trailed out at break even. YM trail break even, okay? Tra YM trail break even, fantastic, fantastic. We have a little bit of a target one, and then on the rest of the position, we trailed at break even. That's fine. Fine. We're going to look for our next victim. <laughs> okay. All right. So. All right. Uh, really great news with Home Depot has achieved our target one. Okay, we're still gonna keep an eye on that in mini SMP for uh, later today. If, depends on, take a look at the wishy-washy. Take a look at the wishy-washy. Okay, we have a high, we have a low. Possibly if we take out 74, we're going higher. 74 to 80, we're going higher. Oh. Not sure I wanna redo this. We're getting close to 1030, which is prime time trigger time and 15 minute rotation. I think we have to do this. We have to do this. Inside bar, 15 minute. This is going to be a long over 75. The stop is still going to be the same. The stop is going to be huge. 
A10, but position size for that, position size for that. Uh, let's go to the 15 minute here. See, we just discovered the ranges right now. Uh, pop up a little bit in RTY. RTY is holding by this uh, nice support area, by the way, into the 80s, fulcrum 80s. NASDAQ is gaining strength a little bit from this doji. Not thrilled about the pattern. Not thrilled about the pattern. See, this is right into resistance. I don't want to do this right to, to buy it into resistance. This could possibly be a breakout. The stop, however, is going to be, this is Phyllis's idea um, of the breakout with a stop below 962. I don't know how it's going to digest this resistance. I don't know. It's strong though. So now with this pattern, we probably have about a one hour trade into the 915. So if we take the uh, 875, so that would be like 875 or so. Let me just put an alert here. 875, so you guys have the visuals in case it goes there. The stop is gonna be under 810. So have the parameters right here. Where did the alert go? Okay. See, this would be the entry. You have the entry prices, the stop prices, and the target price is going to be into this 915. 15,000 right on the dot for NASDAQ. SMP is trying, trying, trying. See, this would be the trade in MNE SMP. MNE SMP over 81 and a half or 82, and the stop is going to be below this pivot of 70, 72, below 72. So it's going to be, bottom line, it's going to be 82 by 72. It's going to have a 10 point stop because of the wiggle that we had in the New York trading session. Okay, so I'm going to call the MNE SMP. This is going to be a longer term trade. It's not, it's not going to happen super fast. But uh, we're going to try to up the price and try to make it a shorter trade. But for starters, we have to use these parameters. So the S&P long uh, is going to be uh, 43.82. And the stop is going to have to be 43.72 under. And we have our first resistance area, which is the ATH into the 4384.5. So uh, target one is going to be into the 43, obviously, 84.5. And target two is going to be into 87. And target three is going to be into 43.90. We still have some areas above because it shouldn't have any problem pushing over this uh, over this area. But we have a really squirrely market. Very, very squirrely market. Okay, so the Dow is not liking the highs. Okay, so the Dow is going to be a scratch. Wow, look at the divergent market that we're having. NASDAQ up, S&P sideways, YM, um, uh, YM is retesting the 10 a.m. low.
Water move and snap. Trouble in paradise, why I'm developing a topping tail. I'm looking at my scanner and the market is all over the place today, all over the place. And I'm looking at 15 minute structures. Yeah, no, it's kind of like that into resistance area. When the market is uh, unsynchronized, it's really hard to have a position and go your way fast. You need to have all the indices on the same pace and on the same page. Okay, I want to take a look at momentum right now. A lot more stocks are pulling back than advancing. So that should tell us something here. Oracle pulling back, space, neuro pulling back, TTWO pulling back, rocket pulling back, RKT. Faster pace on the pullback than, uh, than the advance. Okay, the market is taking a breather and we're possibly having a five minute rotation or a 15 minute rotation for a short squeeze in Russell. Possibly lining up for a short squeeze. This is super aggressive. If you do this, do this with half the size, not full size. These are all full sizes here. These were all full sizes. I wouldn't mention half size if it, if it wasn't too risky. It would be 87.5, 87.5. Okay, these are the targets for, um, okay. So we have RTY long, half size. twenty one eighty seven point five. This is the long area. This is the entry. And our stop needs to be under that 80, under this, let's put 78 for now. And the target, first target is that 10 EMA. So into 90s, not quite 90. I don't know where it is. It's let's say 89.5 or 89. Let's do 89 first target. And if it pokes above that, it could definitely start rallying to 95. Let's do 90, 93, 95. Okay. All right, so it has not triggered yet. All right, position for it, 2187 and a half. Let's put this on the five minute here. This is like in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of, it's really the core of the range. We need to either to break out or break down. Uh, YM is weakening, and I'm seeing a little bit of a weakness, a little bit of weakness into some Dow stocks here, like 3M, a little bit weaker, XP pulling back. Financials are, like I said, financials are kind of like floating around. They're not committing and they're not committing at this point. This is a little doji here for a little scalper Rooney in SMP. Uh, over 80. Stop 77. Over 80, stop 77. 
All right, and we are in Russell 2187.5. First target is 89, short squeeze a Rooney. And no participation in um, other indices. All right, we have a high 84.4. Come on, Russell, faster. Short squeezes should be fast. Uh, take a quick look here at, at what's developing on the one hour. If we hold the strength, but we need to hold it for another 30 minutes here. <laughs> okay, uh, we have some really nice, really nice room into that 95 that I mentioned. And the one hour is supporting it if the momentum is going to be there, if the momentum is going to be there. And let's take a quick peek at the 30 minute. Ta-da, really nice, nice confluence level right here. 200 SMA with support, rotating, beautiful, beautiful. It's really nice. I mean, it is supporting the upside. If we are going to go, we will be going. All right, 89 is hit. Uh, Target one, and at this point, stop, stop to break even. I know I'm choking it. I don't want to take any chances today. See this, this, this is a wishy-washy market. Today's wishy-washy word day. We are two ticks into ninety, which is target two. Lemon squeezy, 15 minute rotation is happening right now. And in about two minutes, we may trigger a 30 minute rotation. Bam, we have the 91s. Loving it, loving it, loving it. 93 is our, uh, is our next target. 93 is our next target. If you're looking at SMP, this is a scalper Rooney right here. 80 by 77. Here it is, entry, 80 by 77. Your target is going to be into this dotted line. This is target one into the 81, 81, 25. And then if it takes out 81, 81, 25, it's going to zip higher. Go, go, go. Don't stop now. In about three seconds, we're going to be lifting our stops in RTY. Hey, Peter. Okay. Um, bring the stop up to 90. Let's not give back 90 trail RTY. I don't want to give back today, guys. Don't want to give back. And we have a doji formation in NASDAQ. We can be bullish above 15,005. If I, not doing it, not doing it. If you guys want to do it, you can do it. I can help you. I'm like done. <laughs> okay. So we have a uh, target into 93. We have a high of 92.3. Come on. So our trail stop is 90. Okay, here it is. We poked a little bit higher right now into the 92.7. Nice consolidation, by the way, here in NASDAQ. Nice consolidation, really nice consolidation. By the way, when the price is going to achieve this and cancel the trade that I posted over 81, 82, just cancel it. I don't like it anymore. I don't like it anymore. And we're out. We trailed out at 90. RTY trailed out. RTY trailed out, we're out. Okay, just really quick scalps, guys. Really quick scalps. The only thing that I have is the m and &E SMP here. That's it. 
I want to get it into that. If we get it to 80, mm, see, it's taking its time because it's interresistant. Okay, it's starting to commit a little bit now. It started to commit a little bit now. I'm just two ticks in profit right now, one tick in profit. And NASDAQ is leading higher again. YM is divergent, so we're done with RTY. You got to be kidding me, Ramesh. You're still in the original trade? Wowzers. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Russell, uh, what Russell did was a little bit of a wash. Went to get all the trail stops, went to get, went to um, take all the trail stops out. And now it's probably going to go to that 95. I'm good with it. You know what? I'm good. I, I'm not going to be chasing anything today. All right. 81. This is actually target one. Remember, picked it up at 80. Target is 81. Uh, we need to see it over 81. The former trade that was posted that with the, that really big stop, okay? Uh, we're not gonna be using that because we based our decision on this little formation right here, okay? And if we get the poke over 82, then we're gonna start laughing all the way to probably 83 or so. We're trying to break that pivot high right there at that dotted line. Ramesh's trader of the week. <laughs> Laura, Ramesh's trader of the week. Okay, yes, time to poke above that 82. Time to poke. I can't bring my stop to break even just yet in ES. Days like today, I want to keep it super tight. Oh yeah, negative yardage. I'm not kidding. He's trader of the month. Yes, guaranteed. He did awesome. He did awesome. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of divergence right here. Some topping tails developing, not a good sign. And this is more of a little bear flag formation than anything else, but it's still trading on support. So this is going to be bullish above and still, I don't know if it's going to be bearish below because bearish below doesn't have room, but it has room for a little bit of a pullback. You can see that the direction is still for higher. Oh man, Russell. I told you, I don't want, I want to trail super tight. I don't want to give anything back today. Let's see if ES is going to start picking up. ES has a really small risk. Our stop is right here into the 77. Now we're back to break even.
RTY, if RTY would have continued, here we go. We're poking above that. Uh, we're almost close to 82. Yeah, too bad that Russell for me was half size. So I kept it as a half size because every time we're doing a, a short squeeze that it's a little bit more high risk and has the odds of stopping out. Right now, uh, right now we need to see that close. Uh, we have 25 seconds till we possibly can bring the stop to break even, Ramesh. Uh, in fact, no, in fact, a minute and a half. We need a minute and a half before we bring our stop possibly to 80 and yes. Yeah, Paul, I canceled that trade because we got in earlier. Okay, so you got in at 82 and a half, okay. The stop is the same. Use this stop. Don't use that really big stop. Use the stop under 77. That's it. Yes, they're all starting to come together. They're all starting to come together. And also if you want another trade, if you did not hop in with us on all these other trades, um, a watch would be the Dow, still the Dow over 75, still a watch over 75. We haven't had a tight stop like that in ES in quite some time. Let's look for the old time high here. Okay, put the stop at break even right now. If you want to take, if you have a smaller account, you can take target here. You could take target here. If you have a bigger account, stay in. You can use a trail stop at 82 if you want to chunk it in a little bit. Momentum is still going strong. I'm still going to keep mine, not with a trail stop. So I'm going to put my stop at break even right now. Stop at break even because we hit target one here. Target one is actually the ATH. So I took half out at right here into the 84, at, right at 84. So it's a good day guys, was a really great week. Go ES, go baby, go. It's going into projections, guys. So it has a tradable void all the way into the 90s. So we're going to be looking for this 80, uh, 87 area, 43.87. So it's still going to run into the targets of the original trade that I posted. Um, 87 and 90. Kind of a hiccup move in today's action because we have an we had an overly extended market in the overnight. That's one of the reasons why it's just moving like this. Now we need to get over 86. We get over 86, we move higher. We have a mini sandwich developing on the one minute. 
an SMP. Come on, SMP. SMP, nice bull flag formation. Uh, smaller time frame, two minute, one minute. Nice consolidation, almost triggering a one. It needs to get over 85.25. 43, 85.25, it's moving higher. Forty three eighty five twenty five is if we see that price, we will start engaging and we're going to take out the eighty five seventy five. And if we get over that high, basically, which is the new high, which is the new all time high, we're going to start trailing a little bit tighter. There's a slowdown in momentum right now, even in NASDAQ. Wow, really slow momentum, volume is low. We have the 85s. Remember, we need 85.25 to 85.50. And it's gonna pick up volume. It's gonna pick up some steam. And we have a trigger in YM. If that is what you want to do, it was here the whole entire time. If you want to get it, we got a trigger here. The stop goes to under 809. You're looking for 900 and 915 for targets. Awesome. Okay, let's see. We're still trailing, trading above the 10 EMA small time frame charts, a little bit extended on the two minute, a little bit extended on the five though. We're still holding above 84. NASDAQ is coming in. That's not a really good sign. I'm even thinking 84 to cut it. Let's see. See, I have my, now I have my stop at break even, but I like to trade on high velocity momentum and currently we really don't have that. We have our 85.25 for the high but we have a little tiny one minute range. Okay, we're gonna chunk it out a little bit. 
we're going to put a trail stop at 82.5. You know what? Let's take it here at 83. Take it out at 83. Because if we don't hold the 83, uh, chances are we're going to go into that 82, 75, 82, 25, whatever, and then we're going to come back into 43, 80. Okay, out at 83. Your out zone is 83. You, we Okay, here it is, 83. We're done. We're done. Out at 83. Okay. Um, and that is because I saw a little bit of a downward momentum in the strongest index here in NASDAQ. Okay. No, I'm not in the Dow. No, I'm not in the Dow. But if you're in the Dow right now, you could bring your stop to break even. Bring your stop to break even so you don't lose anything on it. And we are developing this little nice cluster in RTY as well. It's Friday, guys. That's why the market is the way it is. We're not having any really huge momentum. Two minute rotation in ES here. I don't want to stick around, you know, um, for uh, um, for the rest of the day, and you know, hold S and P as a swing overnight because it does look like it does look like that. It does look like that. So it, yeah. See, it didn't violate that eighty two. 82 and a half, 82 and a half. Well, you still don't know yet what it's gonna do. Wow, nice going, guys. Who is in the Dow? Who's in the Dow? Good job, Chris. Who's in the Dow? Ramesh, Dow hit target at 900. It has one more at 15 and done. I'm not in. But it was nice, right? Oh, awesome. Ramesh, Kevin, everybody. Good job, guys. This was a big one. Really big one, very nice call, very nice call. Late bloomer, very nice call. And by the way, NASDAQ may be lining up as well, right here, again, on this candle. Pop up over 006, stop 993.
yeah, Dan, you will see all the trades that we called in the performance portfolio. Plus you have the recording today. You want to revisit. All the trades that we called. See, this one can be a pop up into the 011, 010, 011, and 015. It's going to be a pop up. It's going to be a pop up. Uh, stop in NASDAQ would have to be 92. And uh, kind of mission accomplished here for YM guys. 900 mission accomplished. Huge uh, pivot level into 901 into the Dow. The power of the doji. We teach this in the class. All these setups that you guys see here, we teach them in our classes. You're going to be able to identify them at the same time I do, and you're going to be able to contribute to the room, see the patterns. Um, in YM, you can bring the stop. So don't forget it's at nine, 901 right now. If you didn't take partial profits, you should take at least half or three quarters out at 900. The rest is going to be into the 915 and it has room to 930 to 950. Okay, mission accomplished in NASDAQ. NASDAQ is that target, guys, at target. Beyond this target, look for the all-time high into 17. Awesome. Good job. Awesome. Yay. Chris, really? Did you get the funded account in top step? Oh my God, yay. Laurie, you're still in ES, diamond hands, diamond hands. Awesome, good job guys, rocking and rolling. All right, 915 was hit in YM, 915 was hit in YM. If you still have some left, you bring your stop to 900. 900 is the trail stop. Yeah, today was uh, kind of choppy. It was more of a um, continuation Momentum was kind of tough. Good job, Sushil. Good job, Sushil. You're rocking. Awesome, guys. All right, I'm going to give you a trail stop in NASDAQ. NASDAQ bull flag mini formation, five minute breakout. 15 is a huge target, guys. 15 to 16 right here. 15, 0, 16, huge target. The ATH is 15 and a half. That's where it is. I would take all here. I would take all here. 
if you still want to trail, you have to wait another mm, minute and 10 seconds. That's a long time, but the trail could possibly be 13. The next target is 20. 15, 0, 20. And if it catches momentum, but again, it has a lot of resistance from, uh, from a pivot at 23. So that's why 20 is a big target. 20 seconds to go into the trail, 20 seconds to go into the trail. I, like I said, Friday, I like to trail a little tighter. Uh, it could possibly run to 15050. In fact, if you look at, at a smaller time frame here, the 10 EMA 900 is going to be your trail stop in YM. So YM 900 trail stop. And if it pops over 15, it's going to go 20. It's going to go 920. And then it has room to go into the 930 to 935. NASDAQ 13 is the line of the sand, 13 to 14. 13 is the line of the sand. I would not let it go below 13. Don't let it go below 13. If you wanna go a little, uh, if you wanna go like a little bit, um, If you want to give it room, let me put it this way. If you want to give it room, your stop needs to be break even. You collected already big profits right here into the 15. That was the big target. So you should be half out. There's no reason why it should not be at least half out. 900 is the line in the sand in YM. If YM is going to go below 900, it's going to start pulling back. So as long as it's holding 900, it's going to pop up. So in the Dow, we're looking for 20. And we're looking for 35, 20 and 35. Lori, good job. Who else is in ES still? I'm not in ES. I'm not in ES. I trailed out, bailed out early. Exactly, Paul. Exactly. Good job. Awesome. Amy, you're still in. Great job. Here's the 16 in NASDAQ. It's a hard decision in NASDAQ. See, um, it already hit that 20 target. We need to see it back over 20 if it's gonna go higher. It had a little whip into the 10 exponential moving average. Awesome. Thank you. Yasash, thank you. Russell is waking up following that short squeeze. See where it went, guys? Ring a bell. Take a look at these lows. Support becomes resistance, right? Support becomes minor resistance, much more likely to uh, break in uptrends because larger structure is still strong. And here we have commitment in YM, YM, 920s. Do I see a 920 right there? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The next target is going to be into the 935. Sandwich developing in ES, sandwich developing in NASDAQ. We pop over 20 in NASDAQ, we're gonna launch to 30.
we pop over. Yeah, we already popped an SMP. Here we go, YM. Here we go, 30s in YM, 30s in YM, stay in. Stay in, no reason to be out, stay in. Continue to trail 90s, ES, final target into, if you, if you held it, final target. How many still in ES? Virtual apples to our teacher hotel. <laughs> I like that. 90s out. Good job, Lori. Good job. Really big resistance here into the 90s and also all time high. We have a high 939 right now. We're pretty much heading into the next target, which is into the 45 to 46 level. And then we have another tradable void in YM. They need a little, a little bit more calibration in the morning. <clears throat> First of all, it's Friday. And second of all, we had a big advance in the overnight trading session. Big advance. We already extended. Popping up NASDAQ, new high in NASDAQ. We just completed the sandwich formation. We're heading towards the 30. I could see another 10 points from here in NASDAQ. And NASDAQ, by the way, has room into that 50. NASDAQ has room into the 50 if it breaks over 30, but 30 is the next step into it. 920 trail in YM from now on, 920 trail in YM. If you want to trail YM, if you don't want to take profits here, just trail 920 and give room so it can pop up a little bit more for you. 920 is the line in the sand. We need to have a print of 15,024 in order to launch higher towards the 30. We have two more minutes into this five minute candle completion. We're developing also a sandwich as long as we hold this low from this topping tail, one minute topping tail right here. If the momentum is still solid, the volume dropped a little bit, but if the momentum is solid, if we break over 46, we're snapping into the tradable void all the way to 60s and 75s. And by the way, oil not doing anything. So we're going to keep it on watch for Monday. Russell, so Sheila, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that you're in Russell. <laughs> Let's see. Guys, I know you. <laughs> I know you. All right, Amy, you're out at 90. Thank you. You're so welcome. You're trailed out. Ramesh, great job on it. All right, we're extending higher. We have a new high, 50s. We're right around the corner, one point away from 50 and YM. Russell extending higher. The next target in Russell is going to be 2,200. For those of you guys that are still in, 2,200. And if you need help trailing, let me know. I know, Lori, the, uh, the pivots are incredible. Gigantic, gigantic magnets. Ramesh is still hanging in NASDAQ. Absolutely. Like I said, the next magnet is going to be 0 30. It needs, however, to hold that 10 EMA and the 15 0 10 area. I would start, you know, kind of be cautious around that area, the 15 0 10. I think we should be cautious into that area because if we don't poke a new high, if it, we if we don't immediately punch in a 24, like within the next minute or so, I think that would be really wise to start trailing that 10 EMA. Massive resistance in NASDAQ. I think NASDAQ, um, 
Oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Dow, sorry about that. Uh, the Dow Trail 940, Trail 940 in YM. 940, guys. Nine four zero S and P guys, you should be done. You should be done. If you didn't take profits at ninety one ninety, you see where it's at. You see where it's at. This is massive resistance, massive, massive, massive. And by the way, we are twenty minutes away from the close of the New York trading session, and we're done. Okay, literally almost done. Okay, so um. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Any other questions? We're done. We need to charge our batteries for next week. Next week is going to be busy. We have tons of economic releases. Tons of economic releases. And uh, we have a lot of companies that will be reporting earnings. Lots and lots of companies that will be reporting earnings. Oh, I can explain it now, Odell. I can explain it now, of course. Okay, so last lot of NASDAQ, if you guys still have it, you see this bottom right here? I would kill it at 010 if I were you. If I would be still in, I would kill it at 15010. Okay, so have a hard stop. Everything is into resistance. Okay, everything, everything is into resistance. Yeah, th this is it, guys, right here. That's it. And by the way, YM is still consolidating, but um, all right. Yeah, Ramesh, that makes sense. 15009 is perfect. Had a great run, really great run. Okay, so let's see here. Yep, NASDAQ's still holding. Okay, uh, let's go to Benzinga. Microsoft just super strong today. Okay, uh, you can see that the momentum is really definitely slowing down. If you want to take off NASDAQ here at 15, I don't blame you. If you want to keep the, uh, if you want to keep a trail step at 10, that's fine. Or if you want to, you know, um, have where Ramesh is having at 15, zero, uh, zero 09, that's fine as well. Uh, I'm seeing a doji uh, in Russell. So if we take out this low right here, we could possibly start coming in a little bit. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, let me just put it in here. Okay, so Odell, I had a conversation, phone conversation with Odell. 
uh, yesterday and we, he brought up Benzinga and he asked me to do a little bit of um, uh, walk through Benzinga and see how that is helping me with my stock trading is mostly, I mean, you're getting a good gauge on momentum as well, but I, I like to um, use it. It's mostly for stocks. Okay. Lori, I love living in TOL Greenville. <laughs> Thank you for a wonderful week. Thank you. Yeah, slightly up in copper, slightly up in copper. Okay. Uh, okay, can anybody, uh, can, uh, can you guys see the screen? Can you guys see the screen? Okay, so here's how I use it. Okay, first of all, I have you know a lot of windows and you can customize these windows to however you like. Uh, it's also coming uh, with a default setting. So uh, it's really easy to use if you have never used it before. Uh, yeah, it's recorded. Yeah, so if you have never used it before, it's really easy to use. Now, Benzinga offers you, for those of you that are interested, off, uh, will offer you, we have a special link uh, where you're always going to get 25% off because I work with them. And um, the other thing is that um, they have a special promotion that is going on until the end of July. So you have one more week to decide, and that would be a really good week to test drive it. Um, so with this promotion, you have 50% off either the yearly, the quarterly, or the monthly uh, subscription, but that is only for the first month or the first quarter or the first year, okay? So that's really huge. So imagine 50% off a yearly, okay? Just, just think about 50% off a yearly. That's huge savings. Um, the other thing is that it's, like I said, it's um, it has... Um, a free trial. I think it has two weeks of free trial, no credit card required. So you can test drive it. Uh, no sales pressure on it. Nothing. It's just tested. See if you like it. If it's useful for you, if it's not, why use it? Um, I love it. Okay. So I've always used Benzinga, but they have introduced now the scanner. You can see that the scanner is in beta. I'm going to show you the scanner. Um, as a scanner, I have always been using uh, trade ideas. You guys know that I've been with trade ideas for, I don't know, I think maybe more than 15 or 17 years. Not kidding. I was probably the 45th person in the company that amongst the first 45 people to, uh, to, get, into, um, to get into the scanner. I still use it because it's specific for strategies that I use. Um, it is fantastic if you're day trading stocks. Uh, I absolutely love it. Okay, so that's totally different, uh, different than what we have here. So that is more geared towards patterns and anything and, you know, things along those lines. I also, um, so when you first sign up for Benzinga, you're going to have a default screen. Now the default screen is going to look something like this. Okay, this would be the de default screen. And from that screen, you can customize it to however you like. So I'm going to show you. So this is the default screen. Uh, I think I customized it a little bit. I'm not really sure. Um, you guys, if you guys sign up, you're going to see if you have it any different than I have. You will receive this recording. I will post it on the private Twitter feed that we have. Um, so, um, this is basically a pre-market watch. So I watch earnings every single day, especially that now we're in full swing earnings season. Uh, it's going to give you the, uh, it's going to give you the pre-market earnings, uh, the after, uh, after market earnings and so on and so forth. Uh, whether they're confirmed, the estimates, um, the surprise. So you have a lot of data here that is incredible. That is incredible. You have revenue estimates, price, et cetera. Uh, and the period that they're reporting. So this is Q2. So in Q3, you have the Q2 reports. The other window that you have is, for example, if you're looking, if you see it, if you're watching a stock, for example, like AMC, or let's say you're watching, I don't know, let's say you're watching something else. Uh, let's see, Apple. Okay. You could type it in and you could see all the news that came out of Apple, right? Everything. You could see that there is some news coming out at 11, at 10, at nine o'clock, at eight o'clock, et cetera. So you could see 
all of these releases that are coming out. And you can see why is it moving, if there is any interest. Um, for example, here, you can see that if you click on it, you're going to be able to see. So uh, for example, Facebook Q2 earnings ahead, privacy and monopoly concerns, uh, seen as possible focus, et cetera. So you can see that you have all of this information right here. Plus you have a chart, okay? So oftentimes you're going to have a chart figure one, quarter, et cetera. So you have all of this information right here, okay? Right at your fingertips. This is incredibly useful information because when you want to take a decision based on, uh, you know, um, for example, whether you wanna go long or short, you, you wanna make sure that you get all your fundamentals, you get all your technicals, you get all your uh, unexpected or expected data. The other uh, window that you have here, you have a really small chart just in case you know you want to have a quick view, for example, of minor time frames or smaller time frames. But we're going to talk about this uh, uh, in another screen. And here you have again news. You have a calendar here as well. For example, it's going to give you all the earnings, right? Q1, Q2, Q3, etc. It gives you financial data. So it gives you all the financial data for the stock that you're trading, uh, for uh, the short-term investments, et cetera, uh, total current assets. It gives you like shareholders equity. So everything, all the details. Now, I don't recommend like if you're, you know, just day trading, just pay attention to the technical pattern. This is like not going to be uh, as important for you, not unless you're investing in it or swing trading it or, um, anything along those lines, okay? And then you have here key data. You have the float. This is very new. They have introduced the float. I'm going to share with you that in a second in a different screen because I have it in a different screen. And here you have a quick, for example, um, a window that I have customized myself for my needs into the opening gaps. So you're getting all the stocks that are gapping up and all the stocks uh, that are gapping down. So it really, so... Uh, here, for example, you can customize it to however you like. You can download it to a CVS file, and then you can upload it if you want into your platform. For example, you can upload it into Think or Swim, the exact same list, if you want to have it on your platform. So it's highly, highly customizable. Uh, I have another window here that has earnings. So I want to dedicate this to earnings. And as soon as an earnings comes out, I like to pop it up and I like to watch it, for example, on the daily uh, chart. So you have a really nice chart here. Um, I have my indicators here. I typically keep it on a 15 minute and um, uh, after the open and I watch it on the hourly basis uh, during uh, the overnight trading session. So before the market opens, so I like to watch the one hour. And you go through all of these stocks, for example, you know, all of these uh, had earnings today, for example, AXP, because we talked about AXP. And if you look at the structure, for example, on the daily chart, you can see that it gapped up above resistance. So this is highly bullish. Uh, I don't trade stocks right on the same day. For example, swing trading. If I was a day trader, yes. But as a uh, as a swing trader, I like to I like to uh, see the stock marinate for about a day or two or three before I hop into it, uh, whether or long or short. Um, and of course, okay. So you have a different stock, SLB here. You have Honeywell also uh, reported earnings. So all of these stocks have reported earnings uh, today. The other element that I absolutely love is the scanner. The scanner is incredible. It's an incredible um, tool. Uh, I have customized it here to my preference. You could customize it to your preference. Uh, hey, Mike, have a great weekend. Okay, so uh, here, yeah, I could see it. Yeah, NASDAQ just took off. And I was just gonna say that uh, at this point, because the 10 held, we should have the trail stop into 30. So NASDAQ trail 30. Okay, so at this point, the NASDAQ trail should be 15.030. Okay, so it's on its way higher. Okay, so thanks so much for the heads up, Ramesh. Yeah, <laughs> I love your trailing. You're in sync with my trailing. I love it. Okay, so this is what uh, this is what I love about the Benzinga scanner is that first of all it's in beta testing, but they're always improving it. 
So um, I love to use it. It has a percentage change pre-market. So it's going to give you the movers and the shakers pre-market, not necessarily, you know, so obviously it's going to have the gap, the, the stocks that are going to gap up or uh, gap down, but also it's going to have the percentage from the open. And something that I love is the volume. And the other thing that I love about this is that you can go in and customize it. So you can add whatever you want here. So you could have the trade time, the exchange, if you want the daily high and the daily low. So you have all this information. For example, if you're a swing trader, you want to have the daily high and the daily low because the next day you want to buy it over the daily high and place your stop over the below the daily low. So there's there it, it is incredibly customizable. Plus it has filters. Okay. So what I like for filters here, so you can see that I'm a big volume believer. So I have volume into 1 million. You can see that I have already customized this. So you have to play a little bit around it and know what you want from it, okay? So you have to know what your strategy is all about. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what are you looking for? So this is for a trader that uh, really has a really nice gauge on, I'm gonna use this pattern. I like the stocks that are trading above million. I can help you with that. So for example, here, I'm looking at common ETF and ADRs. I'm looking for all exchanges, all sectors. I don't have pre a preference. I like stocks that are trading above $5. And there's a reason for that because if the stocks are under $5, they're, they may not be picked up by hedge funds, but anything that is over $5, hedge funds may have an interest in it. And then I like the volume over 1 million. That's it. I like the my volume over 1 million shares a day. So I don't want anything that is less than 1 million shares a day. So for example, if I see a stock that's trading 100,000 shares a day, I'm not interested uh, because that means that I may have a hard time getting in and I may have a really hard time getting out of that trade. So 1 million is a, is a really good, um, uh, really good um, volume per day to have. So it's highly customizable. So you could do whatever you want here. Uh, this is only my preference. Like I said, I'm, I'm really a very simple trader. Don't use a lot of um, indicators. I don't use a lot of, uh, you know, um, elements on my charts. Uh, for me, price action is king and it dictates. So for example, uh, pre-market, let's say we had this stock and WHM, you could click on it and you could have here, uh, for example, the chart uh, for this stock. Uh, let's see, let's go to the daily here. So why isn't it displaying? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to the second one. Okay. I don't know. They may be having some, some problems with the charting. Anyway, you can type it in and pop it up on your platform. I don't know why this is happening. Never happened before. Okay. All right. So a lot of these stocks that you're going to see here have already had uh, earnings. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why the chart is not displaying. Okay. All right. So anyways, you get the idea. You get the chart here. This has never happened before, so I don't know why. The other thing that is uh, useful, you have the share float uh, right here. This is very new. Um, for example, you know, there are a lot of scanners out there that don't have the sh uh, share flow. So you have to do your research on it. Let's try it again. Yeah, no, it's not popping up. I don't know. Yeah, it's not popping up. All right, so this is one of my favorite features. It's this scanner that is really useful. I absolutely love it. So I kind of like keep it, the, uh, keep it this way. Uh, I, I look through the percentages, I click on it and, you know, you get a really good, you get your really good information on it. Uh, there's another window that I have created. Uh, and in this window, I, I have the uh, analyst ratings. Uh, analyst ratings, I like to look at these pre-market. So I always look pre-market and see if there's an upgrade, a downgrade, because, you know, the momentum may be based on this, uh, on, um, on this criteria. All right, for NASDAQ guys, bring the stop up to 38. Okay, NASDAQ, NASDAQ trail stop 38. Let me post it in the room. NASDAQ trail stop 38 is popping. Uh, it's actually popping as we're speaking right now. It's going towards 50. Okay, so this is the uh, analyst corner right here. Then you have the news. This is actually kind of like the same chart that you have in the pre-market. See the pre-market here, the news that you're having into, into the pre-market. 
okay? You're getting the same news into this window. Plus here, for example, when if I click on Twitter, you get the chart and you get all of this data so you can take a really good diligent decision uh, on it. Uh, my favorite window is the signal window. Uh, and that is because you have all the block trades. Uh-huh, you have all the block trades. So you know where the big guys are uh, putting their orders in. Okay, so this is super, super helpful. You have the block trades. Uh, you also have session highs and lows, but you're gonna, I'm going to show you another window with session high lows. You have price spikes, for example, if there's, um, if there's uh, a stock that is uh, spiking up or down, you could catch it right here. Um, so you can catch a lot of uh, the trades, for example, momentum trades. It's fantastic for day trading. It's great for uh, swing trading, options trading, uh, whatever your trading needs are if you're a stock trader. I like to use, for example, uh, this, uh, um, let's say, uh, signal and the momentum for my uh, futures trading as well, because it gives me a gauge on momentum. If they're, um, you know, rolling a lot of uh, companies here that are uh, NASDAQ stocks or their Dow stocks or their S&P stocks or uh, whatever stocks may be. Uh, these are just price spikes, whether to the upside or to the downside. Uh, halt and resume is very important if you're trading one of those fast paced stocks, because at one point, if you're up, for example, Nero, right, uh, Nero was 200%, over 200% up in one day, and it was halted, right, I think it was halted once or twice, I can't remember, I know one for sh once for sure, but uh, this is where you're getting your halt information because if you're watching your screen and guess what, you know what, your screen is not moving anymore, the price is not moving on your screen, then, uh, you know, there's a pretty strong chance that the stock is halted. All right, now I have pre-market here. I have another pre-market uh, settings with the symbols and uh, with all this information with the percent change. So uh, I'm getting another piece of information here. You have gainers and losers. You can select this by either gainers uh, and you're gonna have only gainers or uh, if you wanna do only losers, uh, but of course, you can also customize it, for example, if you want to put it towards gainers on a day like today where we're having like a really massive move to the upside. By the way, NASDAQ just hit 57.25. I want to be out of it. This is uh, we're less than two minutes away from the newer trading session. I think it's going to make a lot of sense to trail. You want a tight trail, you could use uh, 50. You want a bit looser trail, you could trail 45. OK, so it's either 50 or 45, depending on your personal preference, whether you want to be out quicker uh, or you want to give it a little bit of chance because the next target is going to be 80s. 15080 is the next target. Okay. Okay. So the other thing is that you can customize it to after hours to see what the after hours gainers are, the pre market gainers, or the regular. Okay. And here on the regular, you have it per session. I have a set per session, or you could have it on the five minute. And this is going to give you the five minute, it's going to give you the power trends. All right, so if you click on the five minute, it's pretty much going to give you uh, some power trends either to the upside or to the downside. Okay, but I like to keep it as a session because I don't day trade stocks. Uh, okay, here you have unusual options activity. People would kill to have this information, right? Uh, Paul, this may be very useful for you when you have this, uh, uh, you have call sweeps, whatever, everybody does into options. I'm not going to get into it at all but you're going to uh, have this uh, super um, uh, useful information. And here I have a chart because if I don't want to pop up. So listen, after uh, uh, one o'clock, uh, I shut down my, uh, my platform and uh, I'm basically operating off of uh, my phone. Uh, and I have this uh, web-based uh, chart right here. I also use TrendSpider. So I use TrendSpider. I have it. They have a fabulous app. I love their app. So I use TrendSpider if I want to see a stock where it's at, and then I could take decisions on my cell phone. I don't have to sit here. So that's the beauty about it. Okay, so right now, trail stop on all 50. Okay, now stock trail stop on all at 50. Don't give anything back. It's 50 and done. All right, and the last thing that I have on my chart right here is momentum, and this is going to give you a really good momentum of what's moving. So typically, this is a really good idea. You can see Disney, 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 Disney popping. So if you're, for example, you know, into a Dow stock, 
And for example, if you're, uh, you know, looking, um, if you're still long, you want to see those Dow stocks pop up and you can see the Qs are popping up here. So the Qs are making a new high, new high NASDAQ right here. So it does, it's not customizable for futures, but you have a really good idea and a really good gauge. And once you see the Qs popping up now, don't forget that this scroll is super, super fast. It's a really good gauge of momentum. So I really like, and by the way, you could pick some really great momentum trades off of this as well. Okay, but pop them on your platform, look at the technical chart, do the analysis, not hard, it's going to take you like a minute. All right. So guys, this is it for today. If you guys are interested in registering for the Power Income Futures day trading course, it starts Monday. I only have one seat left. I don't work with a lot of people. And the, these people that already have signed up for the course have already viewed the recordings from last set of, from not last from the last class, but for the prior class from May. And they're already caught up with the June uh, mentorship. They have already been in the training room. So uh, yeah, they're, they're already caught up. They don't even need the refresher because they, they just took the course. Uh, I just spoke with uh, one member that is not in here because uh, he had to run some errands today. Uh, but he was in the trading room Monday through Thursday and he already reviewed all the materials and everything. So this is it guys uh, for today. So I hope everybody had a really great session. Uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. I have a lot of work to do until Monday. Uh, final trail, like I said, it's going to be 55 right now, 55 trail in NASDAQ. 55 trail in NASDAQ, 55, don't let it go. Or if you wanna take it off, really soon you can do 60 but i'm going to be using 55 okay 55 seems like a really good area okay um let's see so we have to close one quick peek um let me just uh share my other screen okay just give me a heads up let me know let me know if you guys can um can see this can see the screen all right. Wow, what a massive move in, a, in mini SMP. See, I didn't want to stay in a mini SMP. <laughs> I didn't want to stay. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to be sideways all day today. It's Friday, but look how we took off. Well, we still took advantage of some really cool trades today. Okay. <clears throat> so just a quick recap. Uh, we're into resistance into the Dow. Does it have room for higher? Yes, 35,000 is the old time high. It's heading that way. It has been consolidating here. This is a one minute chart for the last three minutes. Uh, this is a five minute chart of the M&E S&P. Where is it going? It's going to 4,400. And over this, it has room to 4,420. This is a tradable void. Measured move is 4,420. Uh, as you could see, NASDAQ is running all time highs into S&P and NASDAQ and NASDAQ is run. Here's a new high in NASDAQ. Wow, this is run away. Wow, what a trade. Uh, it's heading into resistance into 85. S&P is a bummer. I got out way too soon, way too soon. But it was very choppy at the beginning. Very, very choppy at the beginning. And uh, yeah, and Russell from that short squeeze, like I said, I trailed it too tight. The market was very choppy in the morning. Typically I like to go with the volatility and velocity into the first hour in the morning and we didn't get that. We got it way later on. Wowzers, look at NASDAQ guys. All right, so let me see if I can show some more. 60 guys, 60, let's trail 60, 60 NASDAQ, 60 NASDAQ tra trail, 60 NASDAQ trail and done. It's a power trend off of the one minute. It's getting very extended on the two minute. If it's going to start turning around below 60, it's going to start pulling back. Okay. All right. Oil is still consolidating. Don't forget that uh, it can potentially be a breakout. I would like to watch for Monday. I'm not going to do anything into the rest of the day today. So I'm completely done. We had a phenomenal week. Next week, we have more of earnings season. So earnings season is going to be um, uh, really uh, something that we look forward to. Okay, uh, I'm paying attention here to 60. Here we go, we're out. Okay, NASDAQ closed. Good. Okay, so NASDAQ closed at 60. Guys, and a topping tail, and a topping tail, and a topping tail. Okay. This is it for today. I hope you guys had a phenomenal week as well. I'm pretty sure you did. If you follow, if you know how to follow instructions and remember if you do not have a trading plan or a strategy that you need to apply, 
uh, please, please follow me. That's it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just follow, follow along and just follow the guidelines. Okay. Um, hey, Kevin, sent you an email info trade all last night presentation with a couple of questions. Kevin, I have already sent you the answer last night, right after you email, please check your uh, spam folder or your junk folder. It's all in there. Okay, I have answered. Um, oh my God, uh, Ramesh made 83.5 points in NASDAQ alone. And that's not all he traded. He traded, uh, Ramesh, I don't want to put a words in your mouth, but you did YM. I don't know. Did you do, e you did ES. Did you do Russell as well? Awesome. Yes. He, okay. So you didn't do Russell. Okay. You did YM and ES and NASDAQ. Good job. Awesome. Trader of the month, guys. Ramesh is the trader of the month. Awesome. He's an amazing trader, guys. Amazing trader. Okay, guys, this is it for today. I will see you guys on Monday morning at nine o'clock. Enjoy the weekend and uh, have fun. Don't forget to have some fun. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Peter. You too, guys. Okay, see you on Monday. Bye.